chapter 1, lesson 4, is about rounding and estimation. So, this is a completely new topic for the kids. So, if we say, if we see that symbol, that means that's approximately equal. Okay, so, which means when we're approximating or rounding off, what we're trying to do is uh, we need to follow a rule. So, the way that it's explained in the book, it's quite difficult to understand. So, the easiest thing to do is if it says round off to the nearest tens, you underline the tens place, and then you look at the digit after. If it's five or more, then that means the tens place will go up. Okay, if it's smaller than five, meaning four or less, then that means the tens place stays the same. And it's the same for all the other place values. So um, again, to see it in practice, we will begin with problems on page 28. So there's several pages that we will be discussing from this lesson. So Okay, so in this first set of problems, it says, the first one says, round to the nearest 10 liters. So we underline the tens place. Now, if we look at the number after the tens place, if it's five or more, then that means we increase the number and everything else thereafter becomes a zero. So which means since five is after the underlined number, that means that will be a nine followed with a zero. So, to the nearest 10 liters, 85, is 90. Okay, the next problem says round to the nearest 100 meter. So, that means we underline the hundreds place. Again, if the number after the underlined value is 5 or more, then that means we increase the underlined value by 1 value. So, that means the 9 becomes a 10. So that means that's a 10 and everything else thereafter becomes 0. So the nearest 100 meter to 996 meters is 1,000 meters or 10 hundred meters. Okay, so then finally here on the last uh, example, here it says round to the nearest thousand kilograms. So we underline the thousands place. Okay, so if we look at the number after the thousands place, it's a three, which means the number in the hundreds, the thousands place will stay the same and everything thereafter will just become a zero. So that means that's nine, one, and three zeros. So to the nearest thousand kilograms, 91,360 is 91,000. So the way the book does it is it draws a number line. Um, it's too stressful, I believe, for the kids to be visualizing a number line. So the strategy for these types of questions, we underline and then look at the digit after the underlined value. If it's five or more, we increase the underlined digit and then everything thereafter is going to be zero. And if it's four or less, the one that's after the underlying digit, then that means it stays the same and everything else thereafter becomes zero. That's type one. The second type of question that I will be showing comes from page 29. Okay, this one is a little bit more challenging. Okay, so this is problem number eight. Okay, so in the problem, it says, find the smallest number that is 1,600 when rounded to the nearest 100. So that means if it's rounded to the nearest 100 and it has to be the smallest, that means it's on the left side of 1,600. 
and that means that it has to be 1 and then the number after and then a 5 or more okay and then this since it wants the smallest then that means this number here has to be 5 so that when you round it becomes 1600 and the smallest of such numbers has to be 1,550. So that means it's here. That's the smallest number that when you round off to the nearest 100 will give us 1,600. Okay, however, when it wants the greatest number, that means it's on the right side of 1,600. And we know that it has to be a 1 followed by a 6. And then the number after the 6 has to be a 4 so that it stays the same. Okay, but since it wants the greatest, then that means it has to be right before that middle mark. Which means this has to be 1,649. Okay, so again, this is a little bit more challenging, but the kids can look at it visually. This is the one that I would say they really need to draw. Okay, now... Another set of problems that we will be discussing comes from page 32. Okay, in page 32, I've selected two problems. Okay, so the problem says, instruction says estimate and then find the answer. So it wants us to do an estimate as well as the final answer. So I'll put the estimate down here. So if we estimate this, this is technically either a 3,000 or a 2,900. Okay, so here, I'm going to use 2,900. Okay, because I see that that's plus 100. So these are the values that's closest to the 2,900 and the 104. So if you combine that together, that would be 3,000. So that is my estimate of 2,918 plus 104. Now, the exact value, I can do mental math. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add that 2,900 plus the 100 makes it 3,000. And then I'm going to add 18 and the 4, that makes it 22. So that means the real value of that is 3,022. Now, again, if it's too complicated to teach that to your kids, or if kids, this is too complicated to understand, then the ideal thing to do is just to add computationally. And we add by writing vertically. So we start by adding the 8 and the 4. That gives us an extra 2, which makes it 12. Then 1 plus 1 is 2. Then this is going to be, oops, this is going to be 3,022. Same as I did mental math. Okay, so uh, for the letter F, ask the same thing. We have to approximate. And we have to find the exact. So this is approximately 100. Okay, then I'm going to subtract. That stays 25. So which means this is approximately 75. Okay, if we do the actual, since these figures are small, I can do the mental math approach. But again, if it's too stressful, for both you and the kids, what we want to do is just write it down vertically as if it's a computational math problem. So, I start with 90 minus 20 is 70. Okay, and then 8 minus 3, 5 is 3. So, that means this will be 73. So, the exact value of 98 minus 25. So when we subtract, we should get the same, 73. So again, the exercise asks us to estimate. And then it asks us 
to find the actual. The logic behind the exercise is they want you to see that they're fairly the same. That concludes lesson four of chapter one. See you in the next chapter.